COVID-19 has changed everything. Every day we are confronted by the new reality of dealing with QR codes, the constant screening for symptoms, restrictions and rules that are uncomfortable and inconvenient. To end a pandemic, there are lots of factors that work together. Public health measures play a role as well as short-term behavioral challenges. And then there are vaccines. In Canada, we are lucky. Vaccination rates are high and will get higher as it becomes possible to vaccinate more of our children. Our access to vaccines is easy. More than 73% of Canadians have received two doses. And because we are vaccinated, variants of the COVID-19 virus can't develop or spread as easily here at home. Variants tend to come up from places where you have uncontrolled spread of the virus. And that tends to occur when you don't have access to vaccinations. We are on a lucky list of vaccine-rich countries now contemplating and figuring out how and when to give booster shots. Canada is right up there with other countries on the vaccine leaderboard. Others doing well include the United Arab Emirates, where 86% of the population have received two shots. In Portugal, there are several reports how there is virtually no one left to vaccinate within eligible age groups. Iceland sits at roughly 81%, Spain 79 In Chile, roughly 76% of the population has been fully vaccinated. But many places in the world are not as lucky. Imagine trying to run a race where every country is entered. While some will be able to cross the finish line, others have barely taken a step forward simply because they can't. For the countries who have COVID-19 vaccines, it's like we have a fleet of lifeboats at the ready, while other places are just trying not to drown, holding on to whatever they can find. For example, in Ethiopia, a country of more than 118 million people, less than 1% has received two shots. Other countries where vaccine rates are really low include Haiti, South Sudan, Egypt, Togo, Ghana, Kenya, Nigeria. In fact, worldwide, it's estimated that out of 7.7 billion people, roughly 38% are fully vaccinated. And while these vaccine rates stay low, those variants of the disease can manifest. And the virus doesn't recognize borders. We've seen a large surge in Eastern Asia where many of our microchips come from for car manufacturing. Well, guess what? That not only affects car supply in Canada, but it affects jobs in Canada because you can't make as many cars. Then there is the mounting death toll. In the United States, more than 735,000 people have died. That's more than the First World War, the Second World War, the Vietnam War, and 9-11 combined. Globally, more than 4.9 million people are dead because of COVID-19. Do we want to be remembered for the, the race that let you know millions of people die because others had access to therapies that others did not when you know, realistically, this is a global disease, it's a global pandemic. Unless we actually get global equity of vaccines, we're not going to be safe. We're just going to see this, um, this entire pandemic perpetuate over and over again. So yes, Canada, for the most part, is in a good place, and we all want the pandemic to end. But let's not forget, the global struggle is far from over. Catherine Ward, Global News.